Imagine being the youngest daughter of the last emperor of Russia, living in a palace surrounded by jewels and luxury. Imagine being loved by your family and adored by your people. Imagine having a playful and adventurous spirit and a bright future ahead of you. Imagine having everything you ever wanted and then losing it all in a matter of days. This is the mysterious story of Anastasia Romanov, the lost princess of Russia. Anastasia Romanov was born in 1901 in St. Petersburg to Tsar Nicholas II and Tsarina Alexandra. She was the fourth of five children and had three older sisters, Olga, Tatiana, and Maria, and one younger brother, Alexei. She was also a great-granddaughter of Queen Victoria of England. Anastasia was a lively and mischievous child who loved to play pranks, climb trees, and make jokes. She was also very close to her family, especially her father and her brother, who suffered from hemophilia, a rare blood disorder that prevented his blood from clotting properly. Anastasia and her siblings were raised in a strict and sheltered environment with little contact with the outside world. They slept on hard beds, took cold baths, did their own chores, and studied with tutors. They also learned several languages, including English, French, German, and Russian. Anastasia had a happy and privileged childhood, but she was also unaware of the troubles that were brewing in her country. Russia was a country of contrasts, rich and poor, modern and traditional, secular and religious. The Tsar's rule was autocratic and oppressive. He banned political parties, censored the media, jailed dissidents, tortured opponents, and corrupted officials. He also alienated many Russians by his close ties with France and Britain, his lavish spending on wars and celebrations, his westernization of society, and his disregard for orthodoxy. By the early 1900s, Russia was boiling with discontent and resentment. A revolution was brewing among various groups, communists, socialists, nationalists, anarchists, peasants, workers, soldiers, sailors, they all wanted to overthrow the Tsar and establish a new system based on democracy or socialism. The revolution erupted in 1917 with massive protests across the country. The Tsar's army tried to suppress them with violence, but failed to stop them. The Tsar's allies abandoned him one by one. The Tsar himself became ill with stress, but hid it from everyone. He realized that he had lost control of his country, but did not know what to do. Anastasia and her family were oblivious to the extent of the crisis until it was too late. They were trapped in their palace by angry mobs who surrounded them and shouted insults at them. They were forced to abdicate their throne and surrender their power. They were arrested by the revolutionaries and taken away from their home. Anastasia and her family were held captive in various locations for over a year. They were treated poorly by their guards who mocked them, searched them, confiscated their belongings, and restricted their movements. They were also separated from their loyal servants who had followed them into exile. They lived in fear of assassination attempts by radical groups who wanted to eliminate them completely. They lived in hope of rescue by loyalists or foreign powers who wanted to restore them to their throne. They lived in uncertainty of their fate as they awaited trial or execution. In July 1918, Anastasia and her family were moved to a house in Yekaterinburg, a city in the Ural Mountains. They were told that they were being transferred to a safer place, but in reality, they were being prepared for their final moments. On the night of July 16th, they were awakened by their guards and ordered to dress quickly. They were led to a basement room, where they were told to wait for a car that would take them to their new destination. They were joined by four of their servants who had remained loyal to them. They waited in the dimly lit room, unaware of the danger that awaited them. They prayed, talked, and tried to calm each other. Anastasia held her beloved dog, Jimmy, in her arms. Suddenly, a group of armed men burst into the room. They were led by Yakov Yurovsky, the commander of the guard. He read out a decree from the local Soviet that sentenced the Romanovs to death. He then ordered his men to open fire. The bullets flew in all directions, hitting the walls, the floor, and the bodies. The room was filled with smoke, noise, and blood. The Tsar and his wife fell first, followed by their children and servants. Some of them died instantly, others suffered for a few minutes, but not all of them died. 
Anastasia was still alive. She had been protected by her jewels that she had sewn into her clothes. They had acted as a bulletproof vest, deflecting some of the shots. She was wounded, but not fatally. She lay on the floor, pretending to be dead, hoping to escape. She saw her brother Alexei move next to her. He was also alive, for the same reason as her. He whispered to her, Anya, we have to get out of here. They waited until the gunmen left the room. Then they crawled out of the pile of corpses and ran towards the door. They hoped to find a way out of the house and into the street, but they were not alone. Yurovsky and his men had returned to check on their victims. They saw Anastasia and Alexei trying to flee. They raised their guns and fired again. This time, they did not miss. Anastasia and Alexei fell to the ground, joining their family in death. Or did they? Anastasia's death was not confirmed by anyone outside of Yurovsky's group. Her body was not identified by anyone who knew her. Her grave was not found by anyone who searched for it. Yurovsky and his men had tried to hide their crime by burning and burying the bodies in a secret location. They had also mutilated and disfigured some of them to prevent recognition. They had lied and changed their stories several times to confuse and mislead anyone who asked about them. For decades, no one knew what happened to Anastasia and her family. No one knew where they were or if they were alive or dead. This created a mystery that fascinated and intrigued many people around the world. It also created an opportunity for imposters and pretenders who claimed to be Anastasia or related to her. Over the years, dozens of women came forward claiming to be Anastasia or one of her sisters. They told stories of how they had survived the massacre and escaped from Russia. They showed documents, photos, letters, and jewelry that supposedly proved their identity. They sought recognition, money, or fame from their alleged relatives or supporters. Some of them were exposed as frauds or lunatics by experts or courts. Some of them were ignored or dismissed by public opinion or media. Some of them were accepted or believed by some people who wanted to hope or dream. The most famous and controversial of these claimants was Anna Anderson, a woman who appeared in Berlin in 1920 with scars on her body and no memory of her past. She claimed to be Anastasia after being recognized by a former friend of hers. She spent the rest of her life fighting for her rights as a Romanov princess against those who denied her claim. She had some supporters who vouched for her resemblance, personality, language skills, and knowledge of Anastasia's life. She also had some opponents who challenged her credibility, evidence, motives, and mental health. She died in 1984 in Virginia, still insisting that she was Anastasia. But was she? The mystery was finally solved in 2007, when DNA tests confirmed that the remains found near Yekaterinburg belonged to Anastasia and her family. The tests also proved that Anna Anderson was not related to them at all. She was actually Franziska Shanskowska, a Polish factory worker who had suffered from mental illness and identity disorder. The truth was revealed, but the legend remained. Anastasia Romanov was the lost princess of Russia. She was a girl who had everything and lost everything. She was a girl who died a tragic death and lived a mythical life. She was a girl who became a mystery and a legend. This is the mysterious story of Anastasia Romanov, the lost princess of Russia. I hope you enjoyed this video about the story of Anastasia Romanov, the lost princess of Russia. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe to Luxury Freaks for more videos like this. I would love to hear your opinions and suggestions for the next video. Thank you for watching and see you next time on Luxury Freaks.